Hey everyone, Reese here with Cranberry Alarm RA3D. Today I'm going to be talking about our climbers. Um, this is a new um, addition that we made to the robot. We're utilizing ThirstyBot uh, telescoping tubes um, to climb onto the chain. We're going to be testing out a few different iterations, uh, a few different variations of climbing um, at different positions, uh, different arms, and seeing how our center of gravity affects the overall climbing of this robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. So let's go ahead and start. We're gonna start with our most basic um, climbing configuration which is going to be when you're climbing alone and you can just take up the entire center of the chain so um, we'll go ahead and do that and see our arms come up relatively fast and we're still running them at a really low speed um, we could go faster but we figured this is a good controllable speed for us to be at um, we'll go up and we're up right now we can even go further but we think this is fine for now I mean let's go ahead and show the all the way to the bottom just kind of show how far the the, the climbers can go so just about there is right around where our bottom stop is, and you can see we're pretty clear, even when we even when we kind of go and shake a little bit. Uh, so let's go and come down now. Now let's go and back up. Let's go and turn around, bring the arms down. Uh, and let's do the other way. This is going to be important because you know in a, in a match you may not be able to control which side you're coming from. Uh, that's going to be another common thing you got to watch out for. When the chain is moving like that, uh, you got to be careful. So that's, we tried to make our hooks right here pretty wide um, so that we could catch the chain when it's um, bouncing around and shaking. So there's something to watch out for. Uh, so we'll go and come on down now. Uh, let's go ahead and do one. Let's turn around. Let's do one with our, uh, let's do one with our intake out and see how that affects our COG. Let's say you just, you just scored a game piece. And right now we're not totally centered either. We're pretty far to the right. So you can see here, even with our intake out, it's going to be close on if you actually make it or not. But you can kind of see, um, it, depending on your ref, you know, this may be scored, uh, but this is going to be close. Um, I would say this would be a good score. All right, so we're going to come on down now. And now let's go ahead and show, like, what happens if we can only get one hook on, on the bar. Yeah, only one hook. Beautiful. So as you can see, even when we pull up all the way, uh, we still our bumpers are touching down here, so we're not going to be able to score with just one arm. However, um, if you want to get one arm on and you have someone next to you to support you as you go up, there the potential that that could work. Um, but you're going to have to be really close to each other for that to work. Um, I think this, this game is going to be really important when it comes to spacing to make sure everyone has room on the chain if you want to get that harmony. Uh, that harmony is going to be really important for getting that, um, that ranking point. Yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> So we're utilizing the Thrifty Bot telescoping tubes. Uh, each of these tubes are 10 and a half inches. Um, and we went with this because we wanted to really stow them as low as possible. Go ahead and bring it down all the way. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Perfect. So this is what they're going to look like in their stow configuration. This was important because we wanted to um, really pull the chain as far down onto the robot as possible. However, we still wanted to be able to reach um, five inches above the lowest point. We kind of arrived at that because that was a happy median between reaching way over it um, and also pulling down really low. The thrifty bot is really, really nice because it extends really high and retracts really low. And I'm, I'm a really big fan of these um, and really have had no problem. Assembly went really well. Um, all in all, uh, could not be more happier with these. Um, our motors that we're running on these are currently 12 to 1. We could be running them faster, um, but we're using the sport uh, planetary gearboxes. Um, you could use a max planetary here. You could even use a versus planetary. Um, there's a lot of options that you can use here for gear reduction, or you could build your own gearbox. Um, I would recommend uh, maybe you could have the option to synchronize them if you want. We like the ability to have them de uh, decoupled because that gives you the option to raise one side, raise lower one side. 
Um, and that can be important for stabilizing the robot as you're c going up. Hey, I'm Corey. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the climber controls. So to control the two Neos on the, the 12 to 1 gearboxes, we're running the motors in velocity mode. And that ensures that um, as we climb up and the motors require more power, uh, more torque in order to keep going up, um, the climber is going to be going at the same speed. And it also means that whenever we reach our desired height, we're going to set those motors to um, zero meters per second. And so they're going to try and stay in the same spot. It acts as a brake mode. You probably noticed uh, when we climbed earlier that we sunk slowly since our PID isn't perfect right now. Uh, however, that's something that you could tune. We talked about adding something which, um, you know, once we latch down all the way would maybe pin the, the climber in place so that this wasn't possible. But according to the rules, um, as long as you're off the ground at the moment that time ends, from what we understand, it counts as a climb. So it's okay if your robot, after the, the match ends, falls uh, quickly to the floor. Thank you guys for watching this quick update on our climber. And don't forget to check out more videos of Cranberry Lamb RI3D on First Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.